we're going to be working with our coil pot project. We're going to be using earthenware clay and we are going to be making a pot which is primarily made of coils. The first thing that I would always do is I would take my clay and I would wedge it up. You want to have the clay nicely mixed and even in consistency. And then I'm going to start off with the base of my pot. Now the base is not made of coils. The base is going to be made of a slab. And I try to get the slab the same thickness that the sides will be. I need to have it roughly about as thick as my finger or as thick as my pinky. You can see that this is still a little on the thick side. So you can squish it like that. You could take it and kind of gently toss it to stretch it. Okay. Or if you would prefer, in the bottom of your bins, you have a little wooden roller. You could use the little wooden roller and just roll it to the final thickness that you need it to be. So again, I'm going for about as thick as my finger or as thick as my pinky. Now, once you have designed your coil pot, you want to think about how big your base needs to be because you want to make sure that you're still meeting the requirements for the size. Your base could be quite little if you're angling it out in order to meet the size requirements. For this one, I am not going to be doing a piece which actually meets the requirements of the project. Instead, I'm just quite simply going to demonstrate a lot of various techniques for this project. I'm going to start off by doing a base which is oval in shape. Once I have the base cut out, I'm just going to take my sponge and smooth out this top corner here because you often have some sharp burrs that might occur. Now, you can work with your pot while it sits on the table. Uh, you could put it on a board, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a turntable so I can turn it more easily. I'm going to set a paper towel on the turntable first. The paper towel is going to, number one, keep the turntable clean, but more importantly, it will keep the clay from getting stuck to the turntable. So I will just set that to the side, and now I'm going to go ahead and prep some coils. You will most often enough not prep this many coils. You'll prep a few. I'm going to prep several just for time's sake. Now what you want to do is you want to first of all squish your uh, wedged clay into kind of a sausage shape and then twist the ends a little bit opposite of each other. By twisting the ends opposite it will help to keep the coil round instead of going flat. If you happen to notice that you're getting a flat spot, immediately stop and twist the ends opposite. Now, once again, the diameter that I'm trying to get would be about as thick as my finger or as thick as my pinky. I'm going to continue to roll these until they are thin enough and then I'll set it aside. Okay, there we go. Now one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is as I'm rolling, what I do is I use the entirety of my hand to make sure it has a full revolution. You want it to fully revolve as, it, as it's going around there. Also, my hands will pull apart. So I usually start in one spot and I pull my hands apart and that is going to be thinning it. There we go. Okay. Do the next one. So again, make it into the sausage shape, twist a little bit, and roll. Now, I'm going to flatten this. I want, I want you to pretend that I have a flat coil, okay, which I do now. You can hear the flop flop, okay. That, sh you need to stop right away and fix it. If you continue to roll, it's going to get worse. So what I'm going to do is tap this down so it's more squared and not so flat, and then I'm going to twist that part. And you can see when you twist something that's flattened, it starts to look like a drill bit like that. And then continue. So once again, wherever it's thicker, my hands are going to pull it apart, and that is going to make it thinner so it's more of an even thickness. Okay, I'll do just a couple more and then we'll do an assembly. 
Now coils are one of the hardest things to master as far as uh, doing it immediately and right away, making them neat. So don't be disheartened if your first several coils are lumpy. Uh, just keep at it. Remember to twist those ends opposite and it will help a lot. Also, you don't need to work with a huge amount of clay. Like this is a pretty big hunk, so I'm gonna divide it into two smaller sections, okay? Sometimes if you happen to have a thin spot, like I'm gonna deliberately make a thin spot. If you keep your hands in one spot too long, you will get a thin spot. Sometimes you can do the opposite of thinning. If you take your hands together, you can sometimes thicken it. So I just thickened that up again. But most of the times, you're just gonna thin it. It is a harder thing to uh, manage to get it back together again. So it's not quite so thin. Okay, now that I have my coils made, now I'm ready to assemble this. It's very important that the base and the first coil are joined properly. The way to make sure that they are not going to come apart is uh, to score, slip, and blend. Skipping any one of these three could be catastrophic for your piece. We have had students in the past who don't quite pay attention and they don't say they don't blend or something, the entire wall can come off. Now I just used water, but I could use vinegar for my little vinegar container. It doesn't really matter. If your clay is nice and moist, you can use either. Now I'm going to take my scored coil, I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to trim these ends so they match up. This is a personal choice. You don't necessarily have to do this. I just want to show you how you can make it nice and tidy. And I'll dab a little bit more slip on there. I'm going to just scoot this a little closer so it's easier for me to reach. Okay, so with these ends connected, I can then just blend them together nicely. I'm not going to blend the outer edge. I want to leave the distinction between the coil and the base, but what I do want to do is I want to make sure that I get the inside blended. If I left the pot like this, it is temporarily holding it in place, but that wall would probably pop off eventually as it dries. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I blend it thoroughly, make sure that the interior edge is smooshed into the base. Now, I'm using a wooden tool. If you prefer, you could just use, say, your finger. There we go. Okay, now this is permanent. As that dries, that will definitely be secure. That's not gonna go anywhere. That's not gonna be falling off. Okay. Now, for the next item, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a coil, which is a rope. And to do that, I'm going to fold this in half and make two smaller sections. Now, I like to thin each section of my rope out a little bit. If I have two pieces that I'm putting together, it's going to be very thick if I don't thin them. So I like to thin them first get them thinner than the normal coils, and then as I twist them together, it will be more equivalent to one regular coil after they're twisted back together again. There we go. So those look fairly even. You wanna watch for things like dents and cracks. If your clay is nice and plastic, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to moisten this with a sponge because your clay does get dry, obviously, from rolling on the table, and adding a little moisture to it will help it not to crack so much. Now, you wanna stick your coils together side by side. That water will help them to get stuck. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take about midway on the coil, about halfway, I'm going to take and twist one half of it. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to twist 
the other half. If you see areas where maybe it's not twisted as much as another, you can even that out so they all have an even appearance. It looks somewhat awkward sometimes if you have one really loose area and a really tight area. Okay, that looks fairly good. Now, when I'm going to add this on, it's of course going to be a little difficult to score this, but I'm gonna tell you something. On the day that you build your piece, when you have soft clay with soft clay, you can a lot of times just skip the scoring stage. I'll go ahead and add a little slip right here. But my clay is very plastic that I'm presently using, so I can kind of get away with skipping the scoring. But from day to day, you must score and slip when you add new to old. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim these ends. I'm going to just move this again closer so I don't have to lean. And there we go. As I trim that, I want to try to get the ends to appear that they're matching up slightly. Okay, and let's do a little scoring right there. And a little slip. Now remember, I'm not doing anything which is thematic. I'm not doing anything that's sculptural today. I'm just showing you techniques. So as you are be beginning to build yours, you need to think about your form and how things might be going inward and outward. And it's easy to change the direction. If you want it to go outward, you place it a little bit to the outside of the last coil. If you want it to go inward, you place it a little bit to the inside. So like, like that, and that would make it go inward. Now that I have this coil laying on here, while it's still very soft and plastic, you need to get it blended. Every day, when you add clay on, that clay must be blended by the end of class. If you leave it and expect to come in the next day to blend it, it will not work because it's gonna dry and get a little tougher, a little stiffer overnight. So you do not want it to be left unblended at the end of a work session. Okay, all right, there's our rope. Now, the next one that I wanna show you is I wanna show you how you can do uh, little spheres, and actually they're not quite spheres, they look more like, say, a raindrop or something. If you want them to all be the same, roll a coil and cut them equally in length. Or if you want them random, do some little and some quite large, and then you'll have a variety of sizes. I'm going to go ahead and roll these, and then I'll show you what to do after I roll them. Okay, now you can see that I've taken the little spheres and I've rolled them, but again, they're not quite spheres. They're more like a raindrop. They're, they have kind of a tail at one end and round at the other. Now, you can do any sort of variation with this that you might want to. I've had people kind of use this concept but create entirely different shapes. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set these on the wall and note that the tails will be sticking inward and the tails are the part that actually get blended. I'll just kind of stack these up there. Okay, now if you can see this where the the ends of the tails are, and again I'll just bring this closer, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gently hold the outside to keep me from pushing them over, and I'm going to take the little tails and kind of smoosh the tails together. This is a bit of a tricky thing to do sometimes, but just be careful. If you do little amounts at a time, it's sometimes easier. There we go. So that little section was not so bad to do, and then of course I could continue to build up with more of those if I want. Okay, you can see the inside is totally blended where those come together. Okay. Next, I have another technique, and this is kind of referred to as a snail coil because it's wrapped up like a little snail. What I'm gonna do is take my coil and wet it, and then I like to taper the tip so I can roll it into itself. I like to taper it just because I think it's a little bit easier that way. And then I'll roll it up, and usually there's a good side and a poor side, so I usually try to put the good side toward the outside. 
So I'm just going to stick that right there on the wall, kind of temporarily holding in place. And I want to make a few more of graduated sizes because as you're thinking about your designs, remember you want to think about things like um, elements and principles of design, pattern, you want to think about uh, rhythm, uh, shape, movement, things like that. So I'm going to make a few more of these and then I'll come back okay. and show you. Now, I have placed a variety of sizes. I have like big to medium to small and I wanted to create a, lo a little sense of rhythm there and uh, they're, they're really quite fun. They're not blended on the back yet because I wanted to show you two more techniques that you might like. I'm, I've got another snail coil that I'm starting but instead of wrapping only one end, I'm going to wrap both. So this is quite fun. You can imagine you could have one end quite large, one end quite sm small. So I will put that on there. Of course they can go any direction as well. And then I'll do one more where this is wrapped in the very same direction. Of course that's, that's a little baby one, but that gives you an idea. Okay. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to blend and I'm going have. to hold the outside gently with one hand and blend with the other hand. I like to describe the outside holding as, as in if you were to cradle like a baby's head, very gently. You just want to hold it in place as you blend on the inside. Now, as you blend, you need to make sure that you blend all clay coils as they touch one another. So blend where they touch top to bottom and side to side. So if there's a crease between coils side to side, like here, I need to get that blended. Okay, and again, blend on the day that you put the clay on. Don't wait 24 hours and try to blend the next day. Okay. Um, next, I'll kind of show you what you can do. Uh, let's say if you wanted to have something where you create a coil where it waves. Well, you can put in periodic elements, like you could put in a, a coil, a snail coil, and then a, have a space and another snail coil. And you could just quite simply take a coil that goes up and over. So say for instance, like on this, I'm going to trim the end first. Okay, so I could have this go up and over and then maybe end it right there on that side. I'll trim that as well. So it kind of frames it in. That gives you another idea. Okay, next I have another kind of a coil. I kind of refer to this one as a fence. Okay, so I've got a regular coil here. I'm going to add some water to the surface so it's not going to crack. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to bend this back and forth. Now you can imagine this can lead to all sorts of possibilities of things that you could create out of this. Okay, there we go. I will just trim this. All right, and I'm just going to kind of stick it on the wall temporarily. As I get more things built to the side, it will be more stable in a minute. Okay, uh, next, kind of going on with this idea that I had uh, shown you earlier, um, I want to show you how you can do sort of a, a rainbow sort of an effect. Now, you can do this with a central piece, or you can do it without a central piece and just have a, you know, a hole. I'm going to do it with a central piece just to kind of show you. So I have my coil. I'm going to wrap it around a central piece. I'm going to continue to wrap. There we go. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to trim them so they're somewhat even. There we go. And then this one I'll put over here. Okay. 
And I maybe I'll go ahead and get that blended just to be on the safe side too. Since I have two rather large elements, I wanna make sure that they're not gonna fall off. And so not only do I connect it to the clay that's underneath, but again, I must connect the insides of the clay to one another. If you fail to do that, the whole thing could fall apart on you. Okay. All right, and I'll get this one over here too. Now, with something like this, if I want to leave a hole, I could leave a hole. I'll just connect where the clay is touching, and if it's not touching there, I'll just leave it. And as you're blending, just think of whatever way makes it easiest to blend. If you go side to side, up, down, diagonal, as long as you get it blended. Okay, so those are attached now. I'm going to bend this around a little bit more so it has a little bit more of that oval curve to it. You can see that this is getting bigger um, by placing the coil slightly to the outside of the last ones. I was able to get it bigger. Okay. Um, all right, let's try another one. For this one, I'm going to do a coil with a stamp accent. Let me just trim this end here. So I'm using a clay stamp that we made earlier, and as I stamp it, I try not to squish it too much because I want to still keep it about the same thickness. If you made the coil a little bit thicker to begin with, that wouldn't hurt. This stamp is just about too big for this coil anyhow. Okay, so I have my fleur de lis stamped on there. Uh, I will just go ahead and add a little bit of slip where I'm going to attach that because I do want it to be able to kind of attach on there nicely. And then I am going to leave a couple little gaps here because I want to show you what I could do with those gaps. So I've left a hole here and a hole over here. Let me go ahead and get this part connected though. Okay. Now I could leave those holes, but let's say hypothetically you want to fill it if you don't want a gap. This is when you could create one of those little raindrops again. If you create a rain, oops, if you create a raindrop and make a tail, you can then just kind of plug a little hole just like that. I stuck it in there and then blend the tail on the back side. I'll leave the others but I just wanted to show you at least how that would be done. Okay, uh, the next one that I want to show you is kind of fun. I'm going to take my coil and this time I'm going to take a rolling pin and I'm going to roll it at an angle because what I want to do is I want to create kind of a wedge shaped coil. So sort of like a knife blade if you think about it like the blade of a knife. I'm going to trim this instead of doing the whole thing. So if you can see that it's skinnier at one side, fatter at the other. Now I'm going to take my sponge, I'm going to just wet it down, make sure that it's not going to crack on me, okay? And then by setting it on the, the fat side on the table, I can then take this and I can kind of wiggle it around so it's similar to that, the one that I think looks somewhat like a fence. It's like this, except it's got a fine edge. So it definitely looks different. And this could, you know, be stacked up and down, side to side. I'll just put it side to side like so. And this one is probably one of the trickiest ones to blend because I don't want to damage the outside. I hold my hand out here while I'm blending the inside part. Okay, so now I've blended the insides of this. And again, if I want to leave it with a hole th going through there, that's, that's fine, I can do that. But these are also kind of fun where you could use these little raindrop sorts of things. And you could plug it into a hole like this if you wanted it in there. And then I'm just going to take that little tail and blend it as well. Okay. 
Next, I want to show you a coil where if you want to carve something like words, it's very difficult to carve on a round coil. So what I'm going to do is make a thicker coil that's flat. Okay, so when I say thicker, it's gonna be more like my thumb. And I'm going to flatten it a little bit, but you have to be aware of the thickness of it. It still has to be the same thickness as the rest of the pot. You don't wanna to go too thin. So even though the coil itself is flat, it still needs to be the same thickness. Okay, so let's just add this right in here. I'll cut this. And then the flat side, I'm going to be placing out, outward, facing outward. And this will be my place where I could add a quote. And again, I can't emphasize enough, this is not a well-planned design. This is just a design with a million different things on it. So I'm starting to angle back in. If you want to change your angle and bring it in, you just bring the uh, last coil a little bit to the inside of the one that was before it. Okay. So I usually don't carve it until it's closer to leather hard, as you've learned from doing the stamp project. It's much easier to carve when it's leather hard. So I would just let it sit uh, it, until it is leather hard before you carve it. Okay, so that's for carving. Uh, another idea that you could do is you could do a little slab. If you would like to create a small slab that uh, maybe, again, you could carve on it. You could add words. You could do textures. Uh, let's say I'm just going to create just a little shape here, okay? And you could say use objects from the texture drawers. You could texture it, have a great textured background, a stamped background even. Um, I could just quite simply add some texture like so, okay? And then what I wanted to do was I wanted to show you how you could put a sculptural element on something like this. Let's see, I'll, I'll make it go this direction. And let's get that blended. Now, for a sculptural element, if you want to attach something to this, and I have already made a little birdie. Let's say I want to put my little birdie on it, or if I even want my birdie up on top. Remember that it's imperative that you score and slip when you go to attach something. If you just take your sculptural piece and stick it on, it's gonna fall off. So I really do want to score and slip where this bird is gonna make contact. So I'm gonna add some slip. I'm gonna gently push him on. He's still pretty squishy, so I don't wanna squish him too badly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small paintbrush and I'm going to blend where he comes together. Uh, if I come in here and if I blend him, I could very well kind of mess him up. So I just like to secure him a little bit better and blend where he is attached. Okay, and then this is pretty much all the techniques I think that I wanted to show you. Oh, maybe one more. I just thought of one more. So this one is kind of an unusual one. Uh, it only works, you know, really well for some people. If you wanted to have some things that are draping out and sticking off. Again, it doesn't work for everyone's pot, for everyone's design, but you know, certainly it would be kind of cool, you know, if you have shoelaces or um, there was one in the PowerPoint that was yarn that was draping over the side of it. You know, that, that certainly could work well for that. Now, I would never leave my top edge like this with these little gaps and, and grooves there. That's a recipe for disaster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one final coil and I would uh, kind of unify the entire top edge with one final coil just to be on the safe side. So let me just roll that and I'll show you what I mean. And then on this, at the end of the building, when you are done building and yet it's not quite all the way leather hard for cleaning, what I do recommend is that you at least blend the interior with a rib as much as you can. And I could 
have it come up and around over this little guy and then I'll just take it back down again. Okay, so now I'm going to just get this blended. Okay, now I have my top coil blended. Now what I would do is I would take a small rib. Let me just clean off some of the clay here. I would take a small rib and go over the interior a little bit just to help smooth out some of the tool marks. It'll make it a little bit stronger. Make sure again that you always have your hand on the outside when you're doing this blending or smoothing. And then we're ready to let this get leather hard. Now after it's leather hard, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna smooth out the interior even more. Eventually, when it's leather hard, we'll take a small dampened sponge over that and we'll make sure that we don't have any rough spots on the inside, but already this is looking much better with this rib. And then uh, we'll come out here and we'll clean up any areas that uh, maybe need some problem. If you have some smush designs, we'll just fix those up. I'll show you that uh, another day of how to correct uh, smush things. I've got a little chunk of thing there. And, uh, and that's it. And that is the demo on how to build a coil pot and various designs that you might like to use. But don't be limited by these. You can come up with any of your own design.